My name is Loretta Preska. I am a senior United States District Judge for the Southern District of New York. Senior means I have a slightly reduced caseload because of my age and years of service. We are located in very downtown Manhattan and our physical jurisdiction extends from the tip of Manhattan about 60 miles up both sides of the Hudson River. Um, so we work in Manhattan. We have two courthouses there and one courthouse about 30 miles north in White Plains. It's uh, wonderful to be a federal judge. Our jurisdiction is limited by what the Constitution tells us we may hear. So we may hear cases arising out of the Constitution of the United States and out of the statutes of the United States, both, both criminal and civil. So for example, on the criminal side, there are anti-firearm statutes, drug statutes, terrorism statutes, identity theft, all manner of things. On the civil side, we have patent, trademark, copyright, anti-discrimination, and all manner of statutes. Also, we are permitted to hear cases arising out of maritime disputes and bankruptcies. So we are very much generalists, although within our narrow constitutional limits. Well, I didn't start out to be interested in the law. I was actually a chemistry major in college. Uh, the luckiest day of my life, however, was when I received a grant to do what I thought I wanted to do for a summer, and that was organic chemistry research. I did it. I had a wonderful summer, but decided I really didn't want to do chemistry research. So then the question presented itself, what do you want to do? Um, and as you can already tell, what I like to do is to talk. And I had heard tell that one could earn a living by talking as a lawyer. And so with no more thought than that, I blithely applied to law school and the rest is history. Interestingly, I don't think I did. You might know that to become a federal judge in our country, one has to be nominated by the president and approved by the Senate. If anyone tells you that the president came down and tapped him or her on the shoulder with a sword and said, would you like to be a federal judge? They're most likely embellishing the story. Um, practically, most senators have committees that review the applications of people who wish to be federal judges. I was very lucky because the one of the members of Senator D'Amato's committee was someone I had worked for when I was at a large law firm. I started a large firm, went to a small firm, and then after about 20 years went on the bench. But at that time, women were just coming into their own. When I started law school in the fall of 1970, there were eight women in my section of 100. Three years later, it was 25%. So that was the time when women were coming into the profession in larger numbers. Fast forward 20 years to when I was going on the bench, women were starting to go on the bench in larger numbers. And I was literally lucky to be in the right place at the right time. So no, I did not face any obstacles in becoming a judge. The best thing about being a judge is the people. You'll often hear judges say that the job is very isolating. Well, it doesn't have to be. Um, the people you see every day are so much fun. When you are choosing a jury and 
trying a jury case. My job is to watch out for those jurors, to be sure their time is not being wasted, and that everything that is done to make their experience a good one is done. And you get to know them because you get to know what their backgrounds are, where they work, all sorts of things. Also, the lawyers who we see, often we see lawyers over the years, time and time again. You develop affection for some and perhaps less affection for others. And then of course, there are the litigants. And particularly when you are trying to settle a case, you are so in those people's lives. And it is such a service to be able to take this great burden of litigation off their shoulders. It's very, very rewarding. Also, I served as chief judge of our court for seven years from 2009 to 2016. In that job, I got to know my colleagues much more. They would bring me all sorts of problems and issues. I got to know the people who work in the courthouse much more. We'd stand in the coffee line in the morning and talk about our clothes or our children or what was going on. Intellectually, it's always interesting. You have lots and lots and lots of different things across a large range of issues. So it's always interesting. But to me, it's the people that's the best part of being a judge. It's fair to say most are very proud. Often people call up and say, oh, I saw your name in the paper on this or that or the other thing. Um, my children, perhaps, when they were younger, it was a little different. My son is certain that he was afraid to go to parties because at some point in time, I explained to him how little it takes to become a member of a drug conspiracy. So some days he's not all in on it, but these days he is. He tells a story once they were in class in college and the professor was talking about some case and saying, you know, the judge must have been thinking this. So I'm sure the judge thought that. Put his hand up and said, I don't think so. I think X, Y, Z. The professor said, well, how would you know? He said, the judge is my mother. So he was pretty proud at that moment. Well, certainly we have come in in far larger numbers. Nobody thinks twice these days about being before a woman judge, perhaps except for the 925 year old baggy pants lawyers. But everybody is used to it now. They don't think a second time about being in front of a female judge. Um, in the profession, we're still talking about women becoming first chairs in litigation. Um, we see women in the first chair position entirely frequently in government cases. So for example, the United States Attorney's Office in our district, which prosecutes federal crimes, has millions of women and women are often in the first chair. That has not translated so precisely into the commercial litigation section. So I think we still have some work to do there. Many judges in our court have instituted rules telling the lawyers that if they are going to have a young lawyer argue something, to let the court know. And I will tell you that judges will permit oral argument more frequently if it's going to be a young lawyer. The judges also say in those rules that a, a party may break up the issues in the argument and have one lawyer argue one issue and another argue, lawyer argue a different one. So 
we are trying in that manner to help younger lawyers, including many female lawyers, get more in-court experience. It's always important to draw attention to the issue, to make people think about it, both people on my side of the bench and people on the other side of the bench. These days, you'll hear a lot of talk among female general counsel of large corporations about what we can all do and what they are doing to encourage women to move along. Uh, these general counsel encourage their clients to field a diverse team of lawyers to give everybody experience. As I said, from our rules, we can do that. But International Women's Day is a wonderful opportunity in our profession to focus on these issues. More broadly, of course, there are the kinds of problems that women face all over the world, domestic violence, uh, discrimination in the workplace and the like. And again, it's good for us to pause for a moment and focus on those issues. Well, certainly my mother. Um, my mother was a registered nurse and you know we were hardly rolling in dough and she worked at night. She didn't work always, but she worked at night. We kept a large garden. Of course, we kept up the house. She made many of our clothes. I don't know how she did it, but she did. Professionally, I look at judges like, for example, you know, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor was uh, second in her last, her class at Stanford Law School, couldn't get a legal job. So she started her own firm and then went into politics, becoming the first woman speaker of the Arizona State Senate, and then went on to the Supreme Court. So what an example for all of us. And you remember also that the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, also top of her class, couldn't get a legal job, so she became a law teacher. She always tells stories about her kids getting up in the middle of the night and finding her at the dining room table working and drinking coffee. Wonderful examples for all of us. Well, I hope that I have been a model for others. I love my law clerks. I hope that it allows them to see that you can have a career and have a family and do at least an okay job at both. Um, I hope also that our customers in the court feel that they have been heard that there's at least an empathetic ear listening to them and feel like they've gotten a, sh a fair shake, whether they win or whether they lose. So that's what I hope to have achieved as a woman in the judiciary.